Hey everyone, it's a very exciting day. I've got my celebratory background. It's a special day because today is the 40th show anniversary. Is that the right word, anniversary? 40th show we've done on the remote learning with Microsoft EDU webinar series. Uh, we have a saying, at least in the United States, that when you turn 40, you're over the hill. And so our show is now over the hill. And I'm over the hill in age myself, so it's like a dual 40s type of thing. So this is great. And today, because it's such a special day and because there's been so much excitement about all the announcements we just made for Microsoft Teams as well as Microsoft Teams meetings, we have a special guest, Dominic, and the entire show is all about Teams. So we're going to switch to Dominic in just a moment after we get through our latest updates. Quick links, same links we always like to talk about. There's the remote learning site that has all the latest and greatest updates for Microsoft education and remote learning. There's our Teams for Education Quick Start Guide, PDF, really easy to get up and running with Teams. And then lastly, please join our remote learning community. We have over 6,000 educators from all around the world working together, learning from each other. The Microsoft product team is also in this group. We're helping out, we're answering questions getting people started. So please join that community if you haven't already. Updates for today. First one is the Teams for Education, the big 20 updates that just came out two days ago, I guess. That is the most popular ed tech community blog we've ever done. So pretty cool, it has over 86,000 views already. We also have some Teams for Education interactive guides, and then we also have Global Learning Week. That starts next week, and that's going to be really cool we have a bunch of different days so every day next week starting on the 22nd we have a different topic and we have teachers giving tips and tricks and lots of good learning there so a bunch of good updates for today and with that i'm going to be handing it over for the rest of the time to dominic williamson he's a pm on the microsoft teams team and he's been doing a ton of stuff during COVID lockdown. He's been one of the most popular guys around because of all the great webinars and learning that people are getting from him. Uh, he's the master of the online classroom. So Dominic, I'm going to hand it over to you, my friend. Thank you very much, Mike. And fantastic to get to be a part of it today, particularly for the 40th. Uh, I'm glad to get a chance to share the latest things that have come from the Microsoft Teams for Education product group. And I am a program manager as part of it. For those on Twitter, uh, please feel free to give me a follow at Dominic Will IT. That is where I'll be sharing some of the latest things that are happening and also some of my work that I do with educators around the world. Uh, for those who are trying to pick the accent, I'm originally from Australia and I got the opportunity to relocate with Microsoft to the US. So these days I'm based in Seattle and working with amazing schools, colleges, universities all around the world. And so this is where we've seen a tremendous amount of change within Teams to support you know, the exceptional move to remote learning and remote working over the last few months. And that's where I've got some exciting updates to share with you. So in that regard, if you're sitting there saying, who is this one webinar for exactly? If you are in the group where you're you know, wanting to know what's coming soon and importantly, what has just been recently announced for Microsoft Teams to support, support remote learning, you are in the right place. If you are also looking for some of the best practices and a great colleague of mine, Gordon, a little while ago did a version of this and we've released a lot of capabilities since he took you through how you can then set up Teams for online classes and lectures, both before, during and after with some of the best practices. And so I'm going to be doing a bit of a revised version of that now that we have some great new capabilities that, that have rolled out since that was covered. And the lastly, what is the best way to use Teams with my LMS? And I'll share a bit of the details on that one as well. So let's jump into, we've got a great agenda as part of the webinar for today. And so this is where I really wanted to set the scene with a fantastic blog that Mike released at the start of this week, which has a series of big announcements, uh, some top asks that are coming to Teams over the next few weeks and months ahead. And then I'll be doing a jump into really the scenario of an online class and taking you through those key stages of before, 
during and after your online lesson or lecture. Talking a bit then, of course, how we can then use Teams with our LMS or VLE for my friends over in the UK and other parts of the world. And then where can you go to stay up to date? Because I appreciate we're going to be covering some great information today, but there's always new things that are happening within Microsoft Education and particularly also in our Microsoft Teams product group. And I want to share some easy ways that you can stay up to date. And then we'll, of course, be answering questions in the question panel throughout. And we'll do a bit of a recap at the end. So a bit of a drum roll and the big reveal is we announced just a few days ago a whole host of big top requested capabilities are rolling out soon to Microsoft Teams and top of the list was the 7x7 video. So being able to see then the 49 participants in real time, my students, my colleagues, that's coming over the next few weeks ahead. And so this has been a top request. You'll have seen already we released the 3x3 video, so giving you the nine video feeds. And absolutely, we're going to be taking that one step further with the 7x7 video. What's always important about this is from day one, we have encrypted video transmission throughout the entire process of video discussions. And so this is where we've then been investing really hard to make sure that we can then increase the number of video feeds while maintaining that security and encryption, which has always been a core part of Microsoft Teams for Education. The next big one that we announced of was also breakout rooms. So being able to be in an online Teams meeting, so an online class, and then for example, breaking that meeting out into then multiple subgroups, so imagine your students breaking out into groups of four, for example. This is something that we've also announced we are actively working on and we've got developers, engineer, product designers right now that are working to have that available over the next few months ahead. We're also increasing the capability of Microsoft Teams meetings today. You can have 250 concurrent participants and we'll be increasing that also to then 300 attendees. And what's particularly powerful about this is those 300 members, this is part of then Microsoft Teams for Education, which is also then part of the free Office 365 for Education A1 license. So really making sure that you have a great set of tools that are available to all school students and staff members around the world. Now, for those using class teams, one of my favorite things that we announced earlier in the year, the class insights it's getting even better with a new dashboard that will also be coming out and absolutely want to make sure that you feel secure and confident when you are running these online classes and meetings and this is where we're progressively giving you many new controls and more and more controls to be able to manage your meetings including educator only start which means only you as the organizer can begin a meeting and we've had quite a few additional uh, capabilities that we will be announcing. So the educator only and also the unintended meeting starts, which IT policy. So these are going to be new capabilities, giving you even more granular control in addition to the capabilities that we already have today and rolled out just recently. And there's this is a great summary, but there's even more detail in Mike's blog. And I really recommend go through to that. It's fantastic, full of fantastic details. And this is where you'll also start to see a few more screenshots of some of the upcoming things like the new Class Insights dashboard, as well as also a great place to see some of the links back to the user voice, which is really where this all began, us listening to you, our fantastic educators, staff members, and users around the world. Now, in addition to all of those things that we've announced, which will be coming over the next few weeks and few months, we've done a lot also in terms of what we have released as I reflect on the last few, uh, I should say, busy months that we certainly had within Microsoft to make sure we could create a product that was being used and has been adopted so quickly. And this is where we've seen 3x3 video has shipped. So this is when you have the installed Teams app, you'll be able to see then the real-time video feeds. And that's where we are increasing that to the 7x7. You've got the ability to raise hands, so making it really easy for students to be able to you know notify you that they've got a question the ability to have custom backgrounds and I think uh, Mike did a fantastic example of where those custom backgrounds can be used so effectively to do things like sharing a bit of your personality of course also working from home if you're depending on the background that you have as well as also then making sure it's a great experience in terms of shared working environments when we have that opportunity again in the future 
attendance reports, certainly from the perspective of the ability to then know who was part of your online Teams meeting. This is available to you now, as well as also thinking about more inclusive learning. And so this is where right now we have live captions are available in preview, so currently available in the English language. And absolutely over time, we will continue to add more and more languages to that. But that's giving you then real time captioning, just like you're seeing today as part of Teams live events, where you can see live events events will also then be able to do real time translation. This is where in the future when we support other additional captions, we have more and more capabilities coming to that as well. Now, a big one that we've seen when we think about not just Microsoft Teams, but the app platform that supports it, we have now SCORM viewing capabilities. So for anyone that's been using all those rich learning materials as part of a SCORM package, you can now view and interact with those as part of the Go One app for Teams. And then assignments continues to get better with also the ability now to post to a specific channel, which is a great top feature that many people have been asking for and is available right now. And there's been plenty more. That's just to say a few of the examples of what has released. So let's set the scene for a moment. This is a lot of the capabilities that have just released. We've got some big ticket items that are coming over the next few weeks and months ahead, like seven by seven video feeds, breakout rooms. But for those, we've seen millions of new people start using Teams, moving to remote learning and remote working over the last few weeks and months. And this is also where I wanted to do a chance to go through really the best practices when it comes to using Microsoft Teams for education, as well as also particularly just wanting to set a great foundation now that we have those new capabilities like Raise Hand, which have just released. And so this is where I I want to start with a few key concepts. So to all of my friends who have just started using Teams recently to set the scene there. And then for everyone who's been using Teams for a little while now, that's where I'm going to take you through using all of those new capabilities in the context of an online class. So to begin with the most important part, which is of course the Teams UI when you first open it. This is really what we're seeing when we look at then we go into our class team. And if I start over on that left hand side there, really where we see Teams gives it form and structure is through the channels. So you can really think about channels as a place to then give my overall class team that space for the files, for the conversations to happen in then organized and categorized ways. You can see on the left hand side in this class team, our physical science, we have two channels, one for project team one, another for project team two, and then we also then have a channel to discuss subjects. I've worked with others who, for example, are particularly at university, they really like to create a channel per week of content. So imagine you're doing a business course, you might have week one microeconomics, week two macroeconomics, week three entrepreneurship. Um, and these are great ways to then have those conversations, those files all in context of that channel while still being then open and accessible for everyone who's part of the class team to really have that fantastic learner community with people learning and discussing the topics all in the context of that one class team. Going down a little bit further from the left hand side there, you'll see we have then the ability to format a message. And so this is really important when we start to talk about then the ability to also manage communication. And you'll see as I'm talking through the virtual classes today, you know, how do you then also have control over maybe you don't want students to necessarily reply to every post that you make. Maybe this one's an announcement. And so this is where we're giving you additional controls through formatting. Growing across the top of the screen, we have our tabs. And the tabs are one of the really important part of what, the way that you structure a channel. Channel. Every channel has a place to post messages and have those discussions, a place to host your files. But what it also then is the opportunity to integrate apps and services like you can see here, the fantastic OneNote class notebook, which comes with every class team, the assignment service, the grade book. But this is where you can also customize it with that plus sign that you see over on the right hand side there. And that lets you bring in all of these other rich materials, like for example, the ability to have SCORM content, the ability to bring in fantastic educational apps like Wakelet, Kahoot, Neopod, Quizlet, and hundreds of others from the Teams App Store. And then in the context then of that conversation space, this is where you can see we can have these really rich conversations, not just text-based, but I can then add in files, which we can work together in real time. And it's all about discussion here, that real-time collaboration, real-time conversation across devices. Particularly, that's what's core to you know modern Microsoft, making sure whether you're on a mobile device, a tablet in the web browser, on a laptop or a desktop, making sure that all of our learners are connected as part of this class team. 
So when we go across then, of course, to, well, an online virtual class, a big part of it is the Teams meeting experience. And that's why we've made so many big announcements and a huge amount of internal engineering investment to make sure we give you an outstanding experience when it comes to remote learning and remote working. And one thing I just wanted to highlight here is, of course, the way that you create a Teams meeting to is from the calendar itself, where you can go through and go ahead and schedule it. Now, a bit of a tip before I jump into the classroom scenario, this is a question I get asked a lot that I wanted to just quickly share, as you can kind of call this one of Dominic's tips, is you can invite anyone to a Teams meeting. Of course, if your organization IT policy allows it. But for many school districts, for many universities and colleges that I work with, this is exactly how they're doing things like parent-teacher interviews when it's no longer possible for parents and teachers to sit in the same room. And so what this means is you can then just type in the email address and it doesn't just have to be a Microsoft email address, whether it's an Outlook, Yahoo, Gmail, as long as they have an email address, you can then send it to, the, you can send them a Teams meeting invite. And that has just a very simple, easy to click join link. And they do not need Microsoft Teams to be able to join. They don't need a license for it. All they need to do is just click join and they get added as a one-off external member to that individual meeting that you create. So it's not adding them to the class team. It's a one-off meeting. And this is how we can then see Teams also being used really effectively to make sure that you know parents and guardians are still actively part of the conversation. This is how we see it being used to say guest lectures and guest speakers in universities and in colleges. And so that's a bit of a quick tip there. So you'll notice when you start to type today, you'll see, for example, student and staff names. But if you put in an email address, and of course, if your organization allows it, this is how you can very easily create an online meeting with anyone. And so it's a great way to stay connected and connected with staff, students, and of course, then external members. Now, one of the last foundational pieces before we jump into our online class itself is when we are in a meeting. So you've gone through you've invited either some students or staff members or of course maybe an external member to a Teams meeting. What is it that we see when we first look at the user interface in that online meeting experience? And really the core part of it is that center of the screen there. You're seeing a few options that really give you all of that control over your video, your audio, the ability to share your screen or learning materials for the context of the meeting itself. And then this is where the last part that you'll see is also the ability to go through and then do things like, for example, raise hand, which is one of the new ones that wasn't there a few months ago, but is absolutely there and being really well used now. The last part, and I'll go through into a little bit more detail here, is of course we always then have the ability for real-time conversation and real-time communication throughout the entire experience. And so this is really where, if I head over to the next part, is one of those top questions, which is, how do I schedule a meeting for an online class or lecture? And really what are those stages before, during, and then of, of course afterwards? And so this is really where I wanted to start to take you through in context of these kind of key parts of when you're working within the context of Teams. And because really this is a key part of the different stages going through them and thinking about them in this regard makes it much easier and gives a much better experience for yourself in terms of feeling like you're prepared and ready, as well as also a seamless experience for your students to feel comfortable. And then of course, afterwards, how do we make sure that it's still an engaged class because it's not just the learning that occurs during the you know 30 minute or one hour online meeting that you might have, it's also all of those moments you know, when the student is there, part of a conversation where they might be thinking, actually, let me go back. I didn't quite understand that concept. Or I remember Sally, she said that really well, but I didn't quite fully understand that last part of her comment. And how do we then still bring all of those great moments together? And so that's where we're gonna be going through then as part of this online class example. And so you'll see here, this is where I'm going to start off with the very important part, which is going through before we actually then host the online session itself. And so the first thing to do before any online meeting can occur is you need to schedule the online meeting. And so what this is meaning is one of the best practices that we have for online meetings is when it comes into the context of particularly class teams, Rather than having to sit down and manually add in all of your students, what we have is the ability to do a channel meeting. And channel meetings are fantastic because what they do is they host then this online class in the context of 
the actual group of students as part of the course. And so what this means is you don't then have to type in any of your students' names. Automatically, everyone who is part of the class, in my example here, my business studies class, they will then all be invited to this meeting. And we can even do it in the context of the topic we're discussing. In this example, it's my week one entrepreneurship topic. And so from that drop down menu when you schedule it, and so that's just always from clicking on calendar and new meeting, this is where channel meetings are a great best practice. And when you click on that channel meeting and click schedule, it sends a calendar invite and also posts a message into the channel itself as a great reminder and place for students to also return to to then get started with the meeting itself. So now that we've created, of course, we have a class, we've scheduled our meeting. Next up, one of the important things to be aware of is what's the difference then between a channel meeting and maybe you've said, well, Dominic, I've actually gone through and previously I've just been doing, you know, create a meeting and inviting a few people to it. Well, what, why, why does this really matter? And I'd say, great question. And here's a really nice quick table that kind of helps to hopefully explain a bit of the difference between the two. Because we're having then a channel meeting in the context of our class, what this is doing is it's automatically making it all seamless with all of the permissions behind the scenes when it comes to then who can access the recording, who can then also view the calendar invite as well as also be part of the chat. And what you're seeing here is because even if a student wasn't able to join live, because they're still part of that business studies class team, they will then automatically be given access to the recording. They'll still see the conversations that occurred. They'll, it makes it easier for you to be able to pin and then make that recording available to your class as part of Microsoft Stream. And then you can also take advantage of all of the easy ways to be able to share learning materials with things like the class materials folder that the class team provides. And so this is where it's a little bit different where if today, for example, you're just creating a meeting and then sending off the meeting link, but not actually associating it back to a class team. This is why you might be seeing sometimes if a student never actually joined the live class, they're not going to be able to see the recording. And that's because if it's an ad hoc meeting as part of privacy and security, well, if they weren't there live, then with this no seamless way for it to automatically know which are the right students unless they're part of a class team. And so that's why those channel meetings are so important and really make a much better experience. So that's where it also makes it not only more easier for you to be able to set them up just by clicking my business studies entrepreneurship week, it also makes it easier for students to then be able to be part of the conversation even if they weren't there live. Now, the other quick best tip as we get set before our online lesson happens is meeting options. And this has been such an important one, which is really making sure that the right meeting options are set depending on the type of virtual experience in class that you're trying to deliver. And this is why we always have a few different options because there are legitimate and very good scenarios for each. And so what you'll see here is when we've created our Teams meeting, you'll see an option called meeting options, very appropriately named. When I click on that, this is where it opens the meeting options view, which is the next part you're seeing on my screen. And so what that's doing is you'll see it actually gives me the opportunity to say who can then bypass the lobby, whether it's people outside of my organization, within my organization. We also will then, as part of that coming soon feature set, which I was referring to, you'll have the ability that only you as the educator will be able to then have this where then it will block anyone else unless it's only you to be able to then start the meeting itself. And what you're seeing here is the hey, also- Hey, really quick, I'm going to interject because I get a lot of questions on this and I want to make sure it's explicitly and super clear. Sure. So I'm going to be, I'm going to pretend I'm an educator asking you a question, Dominic, and I want you to answer Please. this with terms. I wish I could keep all the students in the lobby until I, the educator, come in and start the meeting. Is that possible? Or and will so that be possible? <laughs> that absolutely will be possible. And that's what we're referring to as the educator only um, lobby setting. And so that's one of the things that we announced is coming super soon. And so this is where absolutely today you have those levels of controls for people outside of the organization. And this is where giving even more granular control. Um, and so absolutely that is something that you will have access to. And how would I do that in this, in the meeting options and when this shows up, even if you describe it with words versus pictures, how would okay. I as a teacher make it so all the students just wait in the lobby until teacher Mike says, OK, everybody in? A fantastic question. Uh, and in that regard, you'll see we have already today when you click on meeting options, you can see it says who can bypass the lobby. And if you just take the visual example where we look at where it's already expanded here, who can present, the concept is identical. You have the drop down 
And then from that, you can say, well, everyone can present only people in my organization, specific people or only me. And that's exactly the same type of methodology that's giving even more and more granular control to the lobby where you'll have then the only me option. Great. So as a teacher, I'm like, you know what? The only person who can get out of the lobby is teacher Mike and the rest of y'all have to wait. That's exactly right. It's the okay, teacher awesome. Mike. The teacher mic option. <laughs> I'm just making it super clear because I get that question a lot and it's an important one. It is a very important one. Um, and one of the things that we have already released today is the ability then from an IT administrator's perspective, they can set the defaults for these existing options. So if you're saying to me, well, Dominic, I don't want to have to come in here and then say who can present only me. I really do want that to be my default all the time. This is where we've absolutely provided that at the administrator level. They can apply that, for example, for all teachers just to also save you a bit of time. But then you might say to me, well, Dominic, what scenario would there be where I actually do want everyone to be able to present? And that's also a really good question, which was my sort of comment before around there. It depends on the type of lesson you're delivering. So if I give an example where it's more of, say, a larger class or maybe a lecture example where really I'm presenting out to you and I really don't want you to be presenting any content. Absolutely, that's when I would click on only me. What that means is my students cannot share their screen. They can't change the recording or my microphone or anything like that. But in a scenario where we want to have that back and forth discussion, think of it more like a tutorial, more like a small working group where we have, say, you know, a small group of people where we want to ideate and each person might be sharing their screen at different times. That everyone or people people only in my organization, it's still a super important option to select for those types of meetings. And so this is where absolutely, you know, pick your default, but also be considered that you should know and always consider the options for the meeting and the type of meeting experience that you want to have. Because depending on that meeting is absolutely where you might at different times always go back and revise these so you have the best experience, whether it's with colleagues or with your students. All right, hopefully that makes it really nice, really clear. And there's a quick example on the right hand side of what that option looks like, meaning you in the driver's seat uh, or teacher Mike in the driver's seat can then have full control over whether or not those people can be admitted from the lobby itself. Woo. All right. Um, so this is where just a quick double click so you can see the difference between the presenter and the attendee. As mentioned, when you make someone the attendee, um, they have less controls than the presenter. During a meeting, if, for example, let's say uh, Douglas, uh, we do want to make him a presenter because Douglas has said actually you know, a really good question and he's got an example of his working. Maybe it's a supply and demand graph that you'd like him to present. This is where on the fly you can also go through. And in this example, by clicking on him, I can make him a, pr a presenter or even remove him if I need to. Um, so this is all part of the Microsoft support doc. So uh, feel free, you know, you don't need to try and copy the screen. This will, recording will be available, but absolutely uh, it's all available nice and easily as part of Microsoft support with a summary. All right, so we're feeling good. We've got our class team uh, set up. We've got our online class ready to go. And the last thing that we really want to do to make sure that it's an experience for our students, that they're actually ready and know what we're going to be talking about is having some pre-read materials for the students themselves. And that's where that class materials folder is fantastic because what it lets me do is put in my PowerPoint slides, my Word document, all sorts of different files that by default are read only for my students, but I can still edit them. So you don't have to think about permissions as long as you put it into that class materials folder. It's a really easy way that you can then share a link with the students and they won't make, be able to make any changes. So fantastic for say lecture scenarios or scenarios where you might have a worksheet where you want students to be able to review it. And you can think about this a lot like the fantastic content library in the class notebook itself. Great sort of metaphor for those using that already today. So now we have everything ready to go. Before any last, before any quick meeting, a good way to check it is particularly if you've maybe moved locations or you're working from somewhere that you're not quite used to. Um, maybe the uh, home office was busy, so you've had to move out onto, say, the kitchen table, which is this is where you want to go over and click on settings and make a test call. A great tip there is particularly what this will do is it'll check your speaker, check your microphone, and you can actually hear how you sound and how you look. And it's just a really good one to avoid any of those, you know, can you hear me? I can't hear you moments moments because particularly if you have multiple monitors or multiple microphones, these are like little good ways to be able to double check that the right cameras and devices are being detected. 
So we're feeling good and we've now started our meeting. What you saw Mike do and what you've seen with my background is now you have the ability to do the custom backgrounds and background blur. And we announced also as part of the great uh, blog post that we have also custom backgrounds where you can start to change those is also something you'll be able to do very soon. But the custom backgrounds are already there today. So pick your favorite and then click join meeting. And a quick tip is in that conversation space, because we're in the context of our class team, of course, students will receive a notification that the meeting has started through their Outlook calendar. But one I personally always really like to do is I click type in at team and then you know this week's online class has started and that also then does a real time notification via the teams app itself. And so this is also a good one if you're noticing maybe a few students weren't quite paying attention to their calendar, then they also get that chat notification from yourself, which is a bit of a good tip there. All right, so we've gone through our students are starting to to join in and again, depending on your lobby settings, this is where you have the opportunity to then admit people from the lobby. Of course, you can view the lobby who is in there and also certainly um, remove those who you don't want to allow them to come through. Once you've started your meeting itself, this is where if there ever is a student who maybe um, you're having a conversation, but now we need to now mute that conversation because it's time for you to start going through your materials. That mute all button, very, very helpful. And of course, when you are the presenter, Presenter, a student cannot mute you. So you really have that control as part of being the presenter. It's a fantastic quick tip there and that's all from the people panel. Heading over a little bit further, those options where you saw when I was going through the Teams meeting UI, remember that, that row of options there, we had the people panel and now what we're looking at is that three dot ellipsis. And that ellipsis gives you some of the more options that we see in Teams meetings. And you'll see this whether you're on your mobile device or on your laptop or desktop. The ability here now to do things like start a recording, have live captions being viewed for myself, as well as also making a few quick device checks. And so this is a really important one. If you are wanting your materials to be then available on demand for your students after the session, make sure you click that start recording. And then of course, when you're the presenter, if the students are the attendees, a student as an attendee cannot stop a recording. So again, you've got a lot of that fantastic control over your lesson itself. All right, meeting started, it's recorded, we're feeling good, we've got a great custom background, and this is where we're jumping into now presenting content during the session. So this is really the materials that maybe my students have now pre-read those uh, entrepreneurship slides, and then this is where I'm really gonna be talking about what does it mean to start your own business and go through and actually start something and do things like, let's say, uh, investment funding and trying to source all of that. You have the ability to present content to your attendees from that nice little sort of looks like a TV screen with an up arrow kind of pushing things to the screen, which is exactly what Share does. And you have a few options when you click on Share. This is where you can share your desktop, which is, of course shares anything on your desktop. And that's one of the big things I want to call out here. It's fantastic because this means not just a PowerPoint or a OneNote, you can literally share anything on your desktop, whether it's Adobe Photoshop, whether it is a say Visual Studio where you want to show people some code that you're working on. Um, this is a fantastic way, very easy for you to be able to literally anything that you see on your desktop, your students will see as well. But you might say, well, whoa, I don't want everyone to see everything on my desktop. I just want to really just show one of the windows, maybe the Word document as I'm talking through the upcoming essay that I want them to work on. And that's where we have the window option. So it'll only show that window. So this is great where it might be, let's say a Word document where you don't want to risk an email popping up or someone seeing something on your background. And this is a good one if you only want people to see that one window. And it does mean that, you know, even if something else on your screen goes over the window, they won't see anything other than the window you select. And that can include web browser windows. So this is a really good tip as well. If you maybe had a web resource that you want to share with your students. You'll notice you've got the option for PowerPoint and you might be saying, well, Dominic, PowerPoint sits in like a window as well. What's the difference here? One of the really nice things about this is when you select PowerPoint is this is just Office 365 working together is it gives an enhanced PowerPoint experience where if you choose to, students can even move through the slides on their own without changing your view. So let's say maybe a student didn't quite catch the, the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics. They can actually go back a slide and review it and then catch back up to the slide that you're currently presenting. So this is a really nice capability that it provides. And if we wanna have a bit more of an interactive session back and forth where we may be having some free form ideas, that whiteboard is a great one to be able to now ideate and then have people have that back and forth collaboration all in the context of a meeting itself. So this is a great one and you'll notice where it says include system audio. When you're on the installed app on Windows, you even have the ability to share some desktop audio as well. So really nice one if you maybe have an audio clip that you want your attendees to be able to hear. 
Now, when students have their video feed on, this is where coming soon, you will have that fantastic seven by seven view. And of course, that'll be that secure encrypted view. While in addition to, of course, today, you have the three by three when you have the Teams app installed. And this is one of the big ones that'll be coming in just the next few weeks that we announced uh, just those few days ago. So a really exciting one that I'm glad to get to share with you today. All right, one of the last parts during our online class is then I've presented some content, I've seen people's reactions, we've had maybe a good discussion about it, but there's still a few questions and I wanna make sure that everyone's voice is heard. And so this is where we have the opportunity with raise hand, where we can see here, Ashley, she's clicked on the raise hand button. And what that does is in order of when they raise their hand, it moves Ashley up to the top of the list. And so where myself here as Cara, as the educator, I can go ahead and then say, you know, Ashley, um, you know, I could welcome her to maybe come off mute and then we could talk it through. Or you'll see on the right hand side, we also then have that chat space. And so this is a real time chat space that we have in the context of the meeting. And because this is in the class team as a channel meeting, it means that even after the meeting is finished, everyone can go back and see the conversation. And I'll talk a little bit more about that during the after stage itself. One of the last tips, and this is something that is also new that has rolled out just recently, is some of the great ways that apps within Teams can really take advantage of the meeting experience. And so this is where you'll have now the ability, a lot of people have said to me, well, Dominic, I want to keep up that engagement. You know, sometimes just because I've got a video feed of my student looking at the screen, they might have something else open up on the screen itself that they're reading. So how do I actually check that they're, you know, um, responding and how can I get some feedback? And this is where polls are a fantastic way to check in and get a quick bit of feedback from the students themselves. And this is where we'll see when you click on the three dot ellipsis, this is where you can bring up some of those great message extension apps. And so if you use something like Microsoft Forms or Poly, you have the ability to go ahead and then bring in those polls real time live in the context of the meeting. Students don't need to switch views. All they need to do is be looking at existing chat thread. And just like this, we can then vote on what are you know skills and qualities of an entrepreneur or whatever question it is that you ask. And one of the great things around that Polly can do, which is another poll app available as part of Teams, is it allows both named and anonymous responses. And there's a lot of extra controls that you have there. So there's some really great apps from Microsoft Forms, Polly and others that you can then bring real time into those online classes themselves. All right, so we've had a great conversation. We've spoken about entrepreneurship. You know, I made sure I answered everyone's questions who raised their hand virtually. I even got a bit of feedback by sort of looking in and sharing a poll with my students. This is feeling like a great lesson and we're getting to the end of the content that I had planned to present for that class itself. What do we do at the end of our meeting? And so this is where a few steps are. One, if you had started a recording as a tip, you then should go ahead and click stop recording. This is where also, just as a tip, it will automatically stop recording once the last person has left, but just as a good bit of best practice, it's always good to signify when you do want it to stop. You can now export the attendance. So this was one that also rolled out recently, giving you the ability to then go ahead and from that people panel, go through and then download an attendance report showing you here, everyone when they joined and when they left. And the great part about this is because it's using Office 365, it's always then showing the person's name as part of their Office 365 identity. So we really know Kara is Kara, which is a great one. Last but not least, you now have the ability to also end the meeting. And so this is a great one, which will then end it for everyone, closing that meeting down. So this has been a great session. My students have learned a lot, but one of the things that they might want to go back and do is actually revise and see that conversation, see the recording. And so because this is in the context of that class team, as I was mentioning, because it's a channel meeting, you will see then that original post, all of those conversations have been had in the context of, for example, our week one class. And so I can see the conversations from Terry, from Marsha, and one of the really clever things that it does is then once that recording has gone to the cloud and finished being rendered, and as a bit of a quick rule of thumb, it typically takes about two to three times the length of the recording for it to be available on demand for your students to be able to review. So for example, if you've got a 30 minute class, it takes about 60 to 90 minutes for them to be finished rendering and then available. What this does is then, again, even if the student didn't join live, they automatically have access and permissions to view this and only the people who are part of this class team have access to access this by default. So it makes it really nice and easy for you to automate those permissions as well by using these channel meetings. 
you'll see when I head on over to my class team, this is where I can make it super easy to then also pin that recording as part of the stream app so that even though over time maybe the conversation will continue and develop everyone can easily see the meeting recording and you can rename it to whatever you like and one of those fantastic things that we're doing to also make that experience more inclusive not just during a session with captions but also with on-demand content as well is the ability then to see closed captions which are generated as part of microsoft stream and to really help students with their revision you can even search those captions and so you see here at the bottom of my screen where it says feedback this is actually then it will jump exactly to the point in time where the positive you know the sentence containing positive feedback was said at three minutes and 56 seconds and so this is incredible i mean i remember when i was going through classes and particularly during the you know, long lectures you know you might be hearing a concept and you're like hang on a second uh what what exactly was the difference again between microeconomics and macroeconomics and then i had to go back and kind of randomly click through the video now with the power of stream and ai you can literally jump to every point in time when that word or phrase was said and so it's a wonderful way to help students as part of their revision and also a great one as a quick tip for any staff meetings if you just want to check maybe when a key topic that you're interested in or even maybe when your name was mentioned if there was an action item for you so here's coming back to it the difference between a channel meeting and an ad hoc meeting and so this is where it's so useful to then have that channel meeting. Um, and of course, those ad hoc meetings, which is when you create a one-off meeting, they are still fantastic and very powerful, but in the context of a class setting, that's where doing it in a class team is a really excellent choice to do. Now, when we go into our class team, this is where the conversation doesn't just stop. We then still have this, fan this fantastic virtual space that is persistent, meaning even though the lecture or the class is finished, the conversation isn't. And we can still go back and keep talking about ideas. I can then follow up with additional maybe polls or questions that I want my students to interact with. And it becomes this continuous learning space that students can always reference you know, at their preferred time, both during the synchronous session and then also asynchronously after the actual session itself is finished. And so this is where also, if you do need to, just as a quick tip, because it's a class team, you are in control. And you might remember back when I was showing the overview of the Teams UI, in the channel space, you have the ability to also format messages. And one of the things that we've also brought out within the format message is the option to be able to say who can reply to a message. And so this is where we now have also moderation. So you can then go through and set, for example, uh, maybe teaching assistants that you might be teaching your class with or co-teachers. They have the ability to then be also moderators when it comes to then being able to reply or respond to a message. And you can even then, of course, mute a student if maybe they were being inappropriate as part of a the chat space. And when I say mute, this is muting them from the chat space specifically. You'll see in a class team, when I go to the members tab, there is that very helpful mute or mute all option. Again, making sure you feel confident and in control of your, of your class team itself. And so these are just a few of those options that you do have to then also be able to interact and then have more of those granular settings over the conversation spaces in the team itself. Now, equity is also a big conversation. What about students who might not have access to a reliable internet connection? And this is where we have the ability within a Teams meeting. If your institution supports it, the option to go ahead, and then it'll automatically create dial-in phone numbers. And so this means even though the student might not have access to internet, they can still then in real time be part of the conversation and listen to everything without ever needing a computer in front of them by doing uh, dialing into that phone number there. So this is where if your institution has the license for what we call telephony conferencing, this is you'll then see a dial-in phone number and then the option to then with a conference ID to join. So a really, really nice one to also make available. So this is where it brings us together then. Hopefully now what you've seen is we had the beginning of our class, the before stage where we scheduled our channel meeting. We then went through, added the class resources. We then made sure our device was ready. We started the session itself, had a good back and forth in terms of sharing content, answering questions. And I also made that session then recorded, which meant my students could view it afterwards. After the meeting, I was able to then go ahead and then view, for example, the conversations that were being had both during the class itself, but also start to ask new questions through polls or ongoing conversation topics, which gave me that control as well with the option to mute if I needed to the conversation space. And then now we've seen here a few of the ways that we have 
also to be able to manage then more limited bandwidth scenarios. And that's one of the great things that OneDrive will also do is it'll sync only then when there is a active internet connection. And it's a good one to be able to also then store files locally on your device. So a few commonly asked questions that I get asked then, which is, well, what happens if my school already has a learning management system? And so this is where, can I still set up a Teams meeting from right from my LMS? And absolutely you can. Um, and so in that regard, this is where you have the ability to go ahead and from LMSs like Canvas, Moodle and Blackboard, you can go through and schedule a meeting. But one thing we would always recommend is the ability then to go through and then do a uh, automate the class team creation itself from your student information system. And this is where School Data Sync is a fantastic tool to do that. So this is where that student information system, just like it sends its information across to your uh, LMS today, you can do the same thing for Teams. Next question that I get asked a lot is, tell me more about the upcoming features or enhancements. I can't wait, how do I stay informed? And there's a few really great ways to be able to do that. And the easiest one is directly from within Teams, which is clicking on that help button, which is then, this is where we have the what's new, training topics, as well as also we want to hear from you. Absolutely, this is where we've been working so hard over the last few weeks, months and years to make sure that we're building the best version of Teams for education for you. And this is when we have where we have our user voice community where it's an opportunity for every single person to submit their feature ideas and also vote on those ideas. And that really helps us to be able to know where to prioritize, like everyone, there's only so many hours in the day and we want to do the best that we can for you. And then this helps us to understand and know where is the biggest need. And this is where you saw, you know, those great features like seven by seven video that we've announced and breakout rooms announced is coming soon. You know, this is really how the process all comes together. And so this is where if you search for user voice or if you go to bit.ly teams edu user voice, you can go straight to the web page for it. And of course, then there are our fantastic Microsoft education blogs like the one that Mike has where he has brought out, you know, all of this great information just a few days ago. So this is to wrap it up then, myself and our product team, we have then regular webinars every month going from June into July and well beyond, depending when you are watching this, if you're watching the recording, you can visit those from aka.ms forward slash teams edu webinars to be able to then join our free Teams for Education webinars. And that is where I will pass back over to Mike. Great. Well, thank you, Dominic. Wow, this is, uh, I used to joke that when Gordon Chang, who did a, a meetings presentation, my nickname for him was hashtag prom king because it was so popular. But after this, I don't know, he's got competition for the, uh, the prom king. So that was <laughs> a great presentation, just tons of good information and so relevant and so timely. Thanks a ton. I'm, I can't wait to post this deck publicly. It's going to be very popular, Dominic. So uh, thank you so much. Happy to. In terms of the wrap up, uh, and I've, I've got the three links here, all of them accurate. We've got the Teams Education 20 update. So that's the blog that Dominic referenced multiple times. That's fully available right here. We have the Teams for Education interactive guides. Those are just launched and a really cool way to walk people through click by click, step by step on how to use Teams for remote learning. And lastly, the Global Week URL, the Global Learning Week. That's gonna be next week. That's going to be a lot of educators sharing and learning, and that should be a lot of fun as well. And also the PowerPoint from today that Dominic, a very detailed one, a very informative one, that's going to be posted by tomorrow morning. The video will show up on our YouTube playlist for remote learning. It's our 40th. Woo! And also the support link at the bottom. If you have any challenges, issues you're running into, we have support experts who are focused only on educators and schools. You can file a support ticket right there. And other than that, a big super 40 times thank you to Maryline, who is our incredible producer behind the scenes. She does a ton of work and it's also perfectly detailed and makes everything very easy. So a big thank you to, to Maryline for everything you do and we hope to see you soon.